Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. We love listener questions. How do you leave us one? You go to the funastrology.com website, and up at the upper left is an orange button that you click to do this. I'm just wondering about kites. I have in my natal chart a kite. Mine's got a water sign in it. If you can explain what makes people with kites special. Thank you. A kite is basically, it starts with a grand trine. Those already are, they're not rare, but they are certainly unusual. Now, a grand trine being what? A grand trine is three planetary archetypes, three planets in a 120-degree grand trine, which means they form a a big triangle. They usually are in the same element. So if you have a planet at one degrees, it it will trine another planet at one degree Aries. It'll trine a planet at one degree Leo and a planet at one degree Sag. So they're usually in the same element. She mentioned water, so I'm assuming her grand trine in this kite configuration is in water. Um, So sometimes though these grand trines are across the line of sign. You can have one planet at one degree of the sign in trying to another planet at 29 degrees, and they'll be out of element. And that's a a little specific detail you have to consider. So you have a grand trying to start with. But what makes it a kite is that another planet, a fourth planet or point, like the ascendant of midheaven, may be opposite one of those three planets in the Grand Trine. And suddenly now that opposition gives that Grand Trine a focus point for release. And that opposition point will be in, it'll be opposite one of the points in the in the Grand Trine, but it will be sextile the other two points. And that's what makes it look like a kite in the horoscope. So it's the place where that focal planet is that becomes critical to understand what house it falls in and what sign it falls in. The grand trines itself absolutely are opportunities for growth and expansion and success and preserving the status quo, just as all soft aspects are, including the sextile. But the grand trine you look at it, and a lot of beginning astrologers say, oh, luck. Well, it it may be luck, because soft aspects indicate harmony and constructivity between the planets that are involved in that aspect. So in a grand trine, if she has a water, let's say a water grand trine, then she has another planet opposite one of those three points that are in water. But the grand trine is in the emotional level. So if you're thinking Jungian archetypes, the intellectual type, the emotional type, it's in her feelings, her gut level emotional responses to people in situations will tend to keep her in harmony if she listens to them. Now, she may or may not listen to them. And it depends on what houses are involved there, where that focal point, that opposition to one of those planets falls. And she doesn't mention what what house it falls in, but that will often be the key to releasing the energy in the grand trine. In fact, if you have a transiting trine to a planet in your birth chart, it is an opportunity aspect, but it's a soft aspect. So it means that under a trine of, let's say, Mars to a planet, things will seem to be going very smoothly. They'll seem to be working harmoniously. You won't perceive any need to take action. But under that trine, it's a great opportunity to be looking for a job if you were looking for one, for example. But the pressure, you don't feel the pressure under the trine. So people can often, with a grand trine, Be content with where they are. And even though, yes, they have a terrific horoscope for luck and growth and success and expansion, they may not have the motivation to do anything. They like just where they are. Thank you. They love the job that they've had for the last 10 years, and they're going to retire. So they may may not really make.
make use of the trine other than leading a fairly stable life. So that's what that kite configuration it is special in the sense that it's not it's it's more than unusual. I don't know what statistically rare really means, but it's not often that you see them. I would think less than five percent of the charts that I've seen have a kite. Would you take us through the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water, as to how those might influence the kite structure itself? Well, one of the ways to think about the elements is in Jung's Jungian analytical psychology, he talks about four types. The intellectual type in astrology is associated with the air signs, which I am. I'm a Libra, and we do tend to live in our thoughts and our intellect. The water signs are associated with what in Jungian analytical psychology is called the emotional types. An air sign like me assesses everything through my thoughts first. What do I think about it? An emotional type assesses everything through what do I feel about it? That's me. I can tell you. (laughs) Amen, brother. What do I feel about it? And that's about a person, a situation, an idea, just anything. But that's where they live, is on that field. And the water signs, of course, are Cancer and Scorpio and Pisces, so they're the most metaphysical signs in that sense. On the emotional level, they truly are. They're gifted in those fields. And then you have the sensational type in Jungian astrology. Sensations meaning touch, smell, taste, the physical senses. And those are associated with the earth signs in astrology, Taurus and Virgo and Capricorn. So, for example, physical people, they absolutely do assess by the cover of a book. It's the way people look. They're physically attuned. How you look, how you dress, how you sound, how you move. They are also physically attuned to things like uh, the, 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 the weather, the environment. Uh, what kind of uh, room are they in? Is it an old room, a new room, contemporary? Is it poor? Is it rich? Is it? I mean, they. So they're materially, physically, sensationally, through all five of their senses, they're assessing their lives, and they tend to be more inclined to be be oriented toward material comfort and material success and material security. Those are symbols for them that are very important. So that's fire, and then fire is, is the last one, and it's the in, intuition uh, in, in analytical psychology, or the inspiration, actually. It's uh, one of the ways I've always thought about fire signs is from an old French term for when a baby is born, the, the skull has not really completely uh, fused at the top of their head. So there's an opening in the skull in a newborn infant, which is called the fontanelle, which in old, old French means the fountain of light. Well, it's also the crown chakra in astrology so there's an opening at birth there that begins to fuse when the skull fuses but that is the crown chakra is where inspiration enters all of us fire god if you will uh, or the all that is so those are the four types in analytical psychology and that's kind of how they relate to the signs anyway Our caller said, what makes kite people special? Now, I don't know that we need to (laughs) discriminate about the, for those of us who have these squares in our chart, but what is it, would special be a categorization of a kite favorability? How would you say the kite shows up in our life? Well, you know, as I said, it's, it's special in the sense that it is relatively rare. I I honestly, you know, maybe 5%. I don't know that I would go 10% of the charts I've read for in my life have a kite. I don't know that's that much. So statistically, in in my experience, it's it's relatively rare. But what it does do, and I'll tell you one of the, uh, in some ways, worst charts that still sticks in my memory, and I was maybe 30 when I read this chart, It really didn't have any hard aspects in the chart other than the nodes being opposite each other. And it was so unique in my experience, certainly at that point. And it was all soft aspects. And yet when I opened my door to welcome this client in, her face was covered with scars, surgical or maybe burn or accident. I didn't know. 
Well, it turned out she was a nurse. She had been in a car accident with her brother as a passenger. He had been thrown through the windshield. She had at least, it was long before the days of airbags, she had been thrown into the steering wheel and the windshield. And that was the source of all of those scars. And then you, I began to read and understand that if if you don't have any hard aspects, you don't, you relatively have less conflict in your life, and therefore less mo- perceived conflict, and therefore maybe less motive to actually do anything. You ju- you live; things are fine the way they are. So it can be a trying aspect or a grand time can be a really passive kind of aspect that wants to know what is going to happen to me rather than what can I make happen in my life. It's a whole different attitude. I don't know if this is during off topic or not. Is that helping clarify any of that? No, I, I, that helps a lot. And to think that somebody is walking in with no hard aspects for reading you would think, oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to read for the roller skate. You know, the proverbial, every like this person just came to enjoy this life, and you're saying that it's more let things happen to you. That's uh, incredible. Yeah, fix that one in for those of you keeping notes on this, For especially if you do readings. That's a great technique right there. Here's another parlay we could explore on this. The difference between the trine and the sextile. Well, it's sort of like the greater and lesser benefic in one sense, Venus and Jupiter. The sextile is certainly an aspect of expansion and growth and harmony, basically. Ideally, it occurs between signs in harmonic elements, such as from Aries to Gemini, air and fire. So you have compatible elements so that the things represented by the planetary archetypes that are in a sextile or trine are operating in harmony with each other as a rule. They may be across the line of sign if you have one at a very late degree and one in the early, but that's a little specific. So a sextile, in a sense, is like Venus and the trine is like Jupiter, the lesser and greater benefics. The trine in one sense, it's 120 degrees, so it's twice a sextile, which is 60 degrees. So theoretically, Theoretically, it's about expanding your, first of all, knowledge or wisdom or understanding of a situation or a person of yourself, and therefore growing naturally, either through beginning to think about a new relationship or a new job direction or a new talent that you want to get into as a hobby, something new, that you, or maybe an existing job or talent or relationship that is going to grow now into the next phase of that, whether it's getting married if you've been dating, or maybe having children if you're getting married, or having another child if you've already had children, those kinds of growth aspects. And they can apply to your career as well, certainly. So under a sextile or a trine, it's a great time to be looking for a job. But in general, the trine, to me, is more uh, developmental in a major sense. It implies, for example, if you look at the natural wheel, let's say a trine between Aries in the first, Leo in the fifth, and Sagittarius at the ninth, that trine aspect, angular, succeeding, and cadent always involved. So past, present, and future. The sextile doesn't have that, that kind of triad. So in a trine aspect, there's the implied existence of grand trine, past, present, and future. So it helps you look at a situation with a bigger picture. And usually, for example, under a trine, you are learning something. At the same time, maybe you're expressing things you have learned since your last foray into whatever it is. But it's an aspect about reflecting in your outer world the inner growth that you have been or are undergoing at the time of the trine. If you have it at birth, then you're a sort of perpetual learner, I think, in a sense. And the other extrusion that I'd like to just focus on for a second here is the opposition that we talked about. So you mentioned it as a focal point. Could you also call it a tension point, the opposition? Mm -hmm. It's a polarity, first of all. It's two planets diametrically opposite each other in the zodiac so it's it's a demand almost 
in your life that you you learn what both ends of that polarity represent and how you can somehow unite them, bring them together. So the big key with oppositions to me is to look and see if another planet aspects both ends of that polarity in the opposition. And does that planet form a T-square to the opposition? Or does it form a sextile to one end and a trine to the other end of the opposition? Because if you have trines and sextiles to an opposition, then the stress that's implied or the conflict that's implied in the opposition will tend to express constructively in a person's life. If it's a T-square, there will almost have to be some destructive elements involved. Now, destruction can be acted out on a childish level, violence or storming out of a relationship or a job or something, or it can also be constructive in the sense of amicably leaving a marriage that isn't working and so on. So if you have uh, a square to both ends of the opposition, in other words, a planet making a T-square to it, then that opposition is going to be more of a challenge in the life, requiring absolutely direct action, usually trying either to unite both ends of the opposition or to basically get out of the conflict that exists that corresponds with that opposition. Usually it's a familial or relationship conflict. Sometimes it can be a job conflict. Sometimes it can be a philosophical conflict. So people that are born maybe in very repressive sorts of religions, and I read for a lot of of clients who uh, maybe were born in the Middle East under Islam or under a pretty uh, repressive kind of religion, who then have to to break from that. And can they with that kind of opposition with a T-square form to it? On the other hand, some people can't. And that sort of T-square can really define their lives in, in a negative way. In terms of that opposition, that's really what I look for, Thomas. The key to me is, and if it doesn't have either a, a square to both ends of it or a trine sex to both ends, then it operates on its own, but it still gives you the potential for unite. Usually there is conflict in the areas involved in the opposition, the houses involved, the two planets involved. One of the hardest oppositions to have is Mars opposite Saturn, for example, because the, Mars is constructive action. That's its whole idea. And Saturn tends to be, it wants to concretize and define and control and contain, but control everything it touches to be safe and to be secure. That's the way Saturn earns its security. And so very often in the opposition of Mars to Saturn, there will be a family or parental situation which tends to fight against the person's own desires, Mars, so that they can be born into a religiously oppressive background. Their their father or mother can be oppressive of their desires in life and so on and so forth. The family could separate. It could be an alcoholic family. Those are very hard to get out of alcohol and drugs because they're such collective experiences it takes several people to play these games for example and the only way for some addicts of any kind to really truly heal themselves is to remove themselves from the whole environment in which this game takes place and that usually means relocating getting away from those friends that family long enough to really heal yourself as opposed to continuing to be toxic in other words so it depends on the planets and uh, and the other thing the signs and houses involved but that that opposition really is to me sort of the defining polarity of a person's life wherever it exists it has been in my life even all right then let me ask you this <laughs> would you rather have a grand trine or a kite a kite why Because the opposition gives you the release point that the grand trine really doesn't. It gives the focus for the trine. With the grand trine alone, you can wind up spinning your wheels in life, going around or ring around the rosy among those three houses, because they're so secure. And yet with the opposition of one of those planets, now you have a kite and you have the configuration that tells you, aha, this axis is how you should think about releasing this grand trine or making the most of this grand trine. So it gives you a focus point that the trine itself, I think, doesn't. 
Well, I think we answered this question quite brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so glad. I hope she does, too. We explored all the elements of it. Thank you so much for that question. If you'd like to talk to Robert, check out our show notes. If you'd like to better your life, check out our show notes. We have all kinds of good stuff in there. We're doing a book club over at funastrologybookclub.com if you'd like to join us for that. We have the YouTube channel link, which has all of this stuff on YouTube, and just so much more in there, including that direct link to the magic button where you can book a reading with Robert if you'd like to talk to him about your chart and your life or something else that you would like to have a reading about. Leave us your questions, too. If you have a question like this listener did, you don't have to leave your email or your name. You see how she did it anonymously. And that's on the funastrology.com website right at the top. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock. <music>